Well, I'd say it's about time I finally get to reviewing real skateboards. When I was visiting my brother in SF, I put together a deluxe setup. So that is all deluxe brands. So I've got here a real skateboards 8.25, Spitfire Formula 4 101s, and Thunder Team Hollow Lights. As you know, I love to measure my skateboards, so I bought this deck not because I'm crazy about ACDC, not because I was crazy about the color scheme, but I bought it because it was one of the only labeled 8.25 decks on the wall. However, when I finally got the tape measure out, the first thing I noticed was it is a blonde hair shy of 8 and 3 8. So I think this would actually be much more accurately labeled as an 8.38. So I was a little disappointed because I actually wanted a skinnier deck to ride. It was labeled as 32 long, which it is. They got 32 long, right? The wheelbase is 14 and 3 8 center to center, so 14.38. The little pockets from the bolts to where the tail starts to go up are relatively small. It's kind of nice. The nose seems a tiny bit bigger. It's got a nice big nose. Measuring from the bolts to the end of the nose is seven inches. The tail to the bolts is just under six and three quarters. So it is just hovering around freezing and it's time for me to attempt to warm up and film something. Old man, one inch pop. So this is technically just a real deck review, but I must say these Thunder 148 Team Hollow Lights, that's a lot of words, really make an eight and three eighths deck feel a lot more manageable. There's some tricks I'm not really gonna try, like hard flip tricks and stuff, but I can't really hard flip anymore anyways. At eight and three eighths, it's got tons of control on ledges. So this combination has a really nice manual balance point. I really don't struggle with those at all. So far, I'm really enjoying this board. I do wish it was actually an eight and a quarter like it was labeled, but that's just a reminder to me to bring a tape measure when I buy a deck. The pop's still great, feels light and crisp and snappy. The next thing I'm gonna do is put some indies on it and see how it feels after that. See if it maybe deadens some of that crispness I'm feeling. Maybe it's just the light trucks. I've switched it to indies, 149 regulars. I think I'll be keeping these on for the life of the deck. Not because I like them better. I actually think the Thunders worked better but I'm too lazy to change them again, and I'm sort of fickle. Indies are a particularly handsome truck, and once I see them on my board, I don't usually want to take them off, so I have to start with Thunders on a brand new deck in order for me to keep them on. Also, the orange top layer goes really nicely with the orange bushings, and again, I'm really superficial, and I like things to look nice. So anyways, I'm gonna do some skating on the Indies now. These are the guys that are responsible for the crap all over the skate park. Goose crap. Goose crap. Goose crap. Goose crap. If there's one thing you guys don't see me skating a lot of, it's rails. Cause I like to stay low to the ground being 36 and having to support five people. But anyways, the time has come, time to jump. Ah, you thought I meant the bigger one.
that's enough risk in life and limb just for you guys to see me skate rails. Well, I'd say it's finally time to wrap up this board review. I'm down about three plies on the tail. Grip's starting to wear out. I love the color scheme on this thing. I love the way it looks when you start to slide off the paint. So I did get what I expected out of a reel, which was it's maintained its pop longer than the grip has lasted. And that's about all I expect out of a deck. I want it to stay crisp and poppy for as long as I feel like riding it, which is usually anywhere from three to six weeks. And so right now we're at about maybe three or four weeks of skating. I'm probably gonna skate this for about one more week. So on the website, it said that these real ACDC graphics were a full shape. Now this is not as full as say an FA board. The tail has slight point to it. Let's look at the tail from this side. So if that's a full, I like it. It's got really nice concave, tapers out right down here, right down there. Concave and then tapers out right down there. So you got a nice little flat spot here and about two fingers of flat before the nose. About two fingers of flat before the tail, which is just how I like it. Anyways, let's try and get a few flat ground tricks in that I don't usually do. I tried about 30 of those, and the one I'm showing you is the best one. That might be the first and last switch three flip I try on Indy 149s. This board deserved a much better ending than that Switch 360 flip, so I worked real hard to get a couple more tricks in. Anyways, this is my first deluxe brand board in 20 years. I'm a little disappointed in myself for not investigating it sooner and trying out these products. I think they're great, but at least now I know. And now, instead of buying another wonderful deluxe product, I can go and try some other board and test that out, because otherwise, I'm just gonna be reviewing the same stuff all the time. So anyways guys, I hope you found this useful if you're thinking about purchasing a real or a deluxe product. I'm very pleased with this deck, it's been good, but I honestly can't wait to get back on a smaller deck again. It's about time. My only complaint about this board was that it was actually an eight and three eighths and labeled as an 8.25, so that was disappointing. Other than that, great deck and thanks for watching.